Sonnet for Ippolici. A cockney Italian concoction, this century-old snug on Bethnal Green Road, woe betide you take the veggie option, tongue-touching teak at this family abode. Men betray their roots with cappuccino, find solace from the city's morning rush. Others flick through papers like a beano, whilst banter brings you breakfast with a blush. Jesse Wallace beams above the punters, millennials on mobiles keep it stump. Neville makes you chuckle as he chunters, Anna gliding, smiling as she hums. Warm as a jacuzzi, sharp as a knife, Polici's preserving East London life. Hello everybody, welcome to this week's Insta Session. My name is Matt Abbott of Nymphs and Thugs. This is the 30th Insta Session that I've been running. So I started these um, at the beginning of May last year, initially just as an antidote to lockdown one and look where we are. Um, I've really enjoyed running these sessions. I've had some fantastic guests over that period of time. Um, I've had some really kind messages from people who say that they love watching them every week as well, so that's great. Um, and this week I'm joined by Maria Ferguson. So Maria is a poet and multi-award winning theatre maker. Her debut one-woman show, Fat Girls Don't Dance, went to Edinburgh Fringe in 2016, sold out loads of performances. It then won Best Spoken Word Show at the Saboteur Awards in 2017. Her follow-up one-woman show, Essex Girl, was shortlisted for the Tony Craze Award in 2018 and won Show of the Week at Vault Festival in 2019 and then went on a tour. Um, both of them are published by Oberon. And then her debut collection, All Right Girl, was published by Burning Eye Books last April. And one of the poems, My Letters, was highly commended for the Forward Prize for Poetry. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited. I shall welcome Maria Ferguson to the session. All right. Hi. How are you doing? You're right, babe. I'm all Sorry, right. I've um, I've nicked your uh, your background. Move your, your feet. I know. Move your feet, lose your seat, isn't it? That was so weird because I was watching it and then it, there's a delay in it. So you asked yeah. me and I was like, oh. <laughs> I know it's <laughs> odd, but we got there. It's all right. It's connected. How, how have you been doing? Have I been doing? <laughs> yeah, been, been up to much? Been up to much. Um, well, I married you. That's true, you did. I, did, I you. didn't marry you, then I married you, and I've been trying to write some poems, and that's about it. Sounds good. Doing, Sounds a, like doing a, good a lot of, of year. Doing a lot of baking as well, as, as you well know. I mean, it's the only thing there. that seems to relax me. One of my cakes is there, is it? Right there, right there. Yeah. Um, yeah, but also, to be fair, you've done something really exciting, which is um, your debut collection, All Right Girl, which I just mentioned. You've recorded like a binaural recording of it, um, which has been soundscaped as part of Living Record Festival. Um, so do you want to tell yeah. us briefly about that? Um, yeah, I will. Um, so obviously this came out... Um, all right, girl. This came out last year um, in March, about how long? It was like a week before everything locked down, maybe yeah. two weeks at, at the most. Um, and then obviously everything got cancelled. My book launch got cancelled, all the gigs I had in, all the festivals, much the same as a a anybody else. And um, yeah, I just thought it was a real shame that I didn't get to share it in the way that um, I imagined as you know, I, I really feel like it's a performative collection and it should be heard out loud, as I believe all poems should be, really. Um, so, yeah, I wanted a way to share it with people. Um, so, yeah, I got approached by Living Record Festival. Um, seemed like a, a really cool idea. And then after I'd done sort of the basic recordings, they paired me with a sound designer called uh, Chris Drohan, who's amazing and he put sort of a binaural that's a new word for me binaural soundscape um of sort of london um sounds on it so you can hear like uh kids playing in the park and like traffic and beeping and like snatch conversation of hipsters um which yeah i think really um suits the the collection really well so it's a nice thing to sort of listen to when you sort of out walking or stuck in in the rain and yeah it's 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 been nice because 
yeah, people have heard it in the way that I sort of want them to. Yeah. Did yeah. it make you? Did it make you see the collection in a different way, or did it make you see certain poems in a different way? Because obviously, listening to it, you can sort of remove yourself slightly. Yeah, I think it definitely did, and it also made me. Um, I was going to say appreciate. That's really sort of blowing my own trumpet. No, no, in it, but it's, yeah, it's fair. It, it made me sort of listen to the 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 thing as a whole because it's recorded from beginning to end. And I was very careful about sort of the order of the poems and um, sort of the the narrative arc within it, wanky. Um, <laughs> that sort of really comes through, I think, when you listen to it all together, because yeah. there's different threads that run through that you can follow um, and that I think really stand out when, when you listen to it. Yeah, I think so. As somebody who's read the collection and then gone back and listened to the the piece I really enjoyed it and you do it is it is a really immersive experience in itself and like you do sort of experience it in a different way so people should definitely check that out um do you fancy giving us a poem from all right girl to get us started yes I'd love to give you a poem what should it I do have to be from um, all right girl if you don't want just anything really but I might as well push it Matt do you know what I mean <laughs> yeah I might as well um Let's do, let's do the title poem. Cool. So I'll do, all right, girl. So um, running through, there's like lots of different pub poems because I've got like a, a big fascination and love of pubs, drinking in pubs, working in pubs. Uh, I just think, you know, that's where you find the best storytellers. And... Yeah, I've got loads of pub poems throughout it and they're all sort of got all right as the first bits are like, all right, love, all right, mate, all right, son. And this one's called All Right, Girl. It's the call of the blokes I know from trading notes for pints of John Smith's. The relief of another living, breathing thing in an empty pub in January. It's a longing for a lost wife or three a smile as their palm is graced with change. They hold on a little too long. It's the raise of the hand or curt nod when I see them in the street, away from beer mats and tired stories, tired eyes, rosy cheeks. A greeting in a familiar kitchen, the same questions to follow each time as the poetry. As the love life. It's the cabbie who knows the East End like the freckles on his wife's nose. Rolls out names that might impress Jack the Hat, Billy the Bomb. It's the barman on a Saturday night when I said I'd only have one. And my eyes are red and my mouth is dry and all I really want is his voice to be my dad's on the end of the line, miles away killing time with that question I never know the answer to oh beautiful I love that poem um, Cheers, so you've mate. Got... oh I miss my dad so much <laughs> that's just made me think about how much I miss my dad Whew. yeah well I was gonna say it must make you realize how much you miss pubs but pubs and your dad as well or your dad in the pub that's gonna be my a dad in the day. pub yeah that's what I miss my dad in the pub um <laughs> Yeah, that I think, yeah, that's sort of, well, that's the title poem sort of brings together quite a lot of themes in the in the collection. Well, that's what I was going to say. Um, so obviously you do have that recurring motif of poems set in pubs or about pubs. What other themes do you explore in the collection? Um, what other themes do I explore in the collection? Well, there's a lot about um, body image. Like that's uh, something that runs through quite a lot of my work, Always, always has done. Um, there's stuff about about love, about loss and grief. Um, there's a friendship sequence running through it. So I follow sort of the, the friendship with m my best friend who um, has been my best friend since I was three years old. And so there's poems throughout it that are named after sort of the um, age we were at the time. So like 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, etc. cetera. Um, and yeah, it's sort of, 
it's sort of um, an acceptance of, of self as well, you know. This collection was really sort of about me finding m myself and finding, like, my place in the world, really. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it completes the girl trilogy as well. Obviously, um, Fat Girls Like Dance, Essex Girl, and then All Right Girl. So I guess it's sort yeah. of like the, that period of your life, I suppose, or your 20s. Uh, it sort of rounds yeah. off that and just before COVID as well because I guess now whenever you write a poem you can't write it without COVID having influenced it in some way to some extent if that makes sense yeah it's really mad because like I have tried to be like writing um, new poems um, during lockdown and I've been doing like this um, course at the poetry school which has been like really great but when you're not living out in the world you're just like writing poems about you know well baking a cake or going to the supermarket or being locked in your house you know well this is another thing I was going to ask you because so many of your poems are rooted in place and in people and in communal settings so in the pub or in London just out and about in London or, or whatever and you know the people that you live around and your background and your friends and so obviously this period of lockdown stuck with me uh, do you feel like that's actually been a really good thing for you as a writer because it's forced you to completely change direction or look at different influences or? I mean, I think it's challenging, a really challenging time for any writer because as soon as this happened, like loads of people were like, oh, it's, you know, it's your chance to write your masterpiece. Like you must, you must have so much time. And it's just like, uh, no. <laughs> Like, <laughs> that's not how it works but then you put loads of pressure on yourself and actually I've been really lucky I feel like I I've written more um the, than I ever anticipated I would do but you know you can't you can't force these things do you know what I mean there's no point of you sitting down or I can't anyway I can't sit down in front of a laptop and go I'm going to write for eight hours today and at the end of it I'm going to have like this product it doesn't work like that, you know. You can't force yourself to write. And if you do, it'll be shit. Yeah. I hear you. So, I paid, I paid eight I don't even know if that answered right? your question. Uh, I mean, I, it was sort of a, a meandering question anyway, to be honest. It was a little bit like, a, not so much a question, but an observation type thing. So sorry for being that guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it is tough, Am obviously. Really dark? Um, no, you look good to me. But maybe really know. dark i think it's against your brightness in the kitchen there i do feel really bright almost angelic um <laughs> oh. <laughs> are there any and so are there any poems that you've written during lockdown that have really surprised you that you absolutely could not have written before lockdown for whatever reason i don't know i don't know about um like couldn't have written before lockdown but i definitely have taken this time to sort of experiment with new ways of writing and I am writing things that are completely different to to like yeah. what's what's in here um and I've started to I, I've always been sort of like you know the page and stage argument is bollocks you know if it works on one it should work on the other but actually I've, I've started like read reading a lot more page poetry and a lot and it is a, a different beast it it really is um and so i'm starting to sort of question that now and i'm sort of experimenting with sort of what works and what doesn't and sort of yeah just to, just just finding new ways of writing trying to read more be influenced by you know a, a broader spectrum of things and then sort of fuck it all up and make my own rules you know yeah totally well do you fancy sharing something new something post lockdown or something else from all right girl you've put me on the spot here matt well i sh share it any absolutely anything you want something new yeah okay i'll do something new i'll do something like weird uh from my um my word document that's called COVID-19. 
I just like opened a Word document. I was like COVID-19 and everything I've written in the past year has gone into this Word document. It's an absolute mess. And it's like 10,000 words of 64 pages or something. And it's all a load of crap. No, but, it's, it, yeah, let's it's just, not. Let's just pick a random one. Cool. Okay. This is called um, Trying Squid. And it's about the first time I ate squid. Trying squid. Listen to that owl. It's actually a pigeon. That designer charity shop find is a fake. I give you this ring as a symbol of my undying self-hatred. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many books you've read if you go to wipe and find no loo roll. Am I making sense? Okay. Picture a shopping centre Santa smoking on his lunch break. A hot pasty going cold in your bag. Remember that film you recommended? Extremely problematic. Now think of me playing in the garden with my brother. It's 1996. Summer. Mum is in the kitchen cooking calamari. We think they're onion rings. Shove them in whole. There you go. Fantastic. So that's, that, that is absolutely beautiful, to be fair. I love that. <laughs> I wouldn't great. say it's beautiful. It's about all the, the you know, I, I feel like this is what is coming of lockdown. Like that, that is just about the, the experience of bitter disappointment. And I feel like that is all we've got. Like yeah. last year, just a bit of disappointment. Mostly. There you go. Mostly. But there is going to be a lot of great poetry out of it. And at the very least, you've got a pamphlet's worth, I would say. Maybe. Maybe, That's yeah. It. Definitely. No, that was beautiful. I love that. I really enjoyed that. It's fun reading the new ones, actually. I haven't had the opportunity to do that because I've just been reading from this all the time. Yeah, and yeah. Like, th this is this is the really strange thing because the way like publishing works and because it's such a lengthy process, by the time something comes out in print like this, like this isn't me anymore. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, this is like a time capsule and this is like yeah. past me. And then the stuff that I'm writing now, if that ever made it into print, by the time that rocked around, that's not you anymore either. And yeah. it's so weird to deal with that in your head and go, I'm putting out this thing in the world when actually I'm not there anymore. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because you don't get that with theatre and with performance because it's so immediate. It's like, I know obviously with a, a show, it takes a long time to write as well. But, you know, once you've got that product, then it's up and you're doing it. Yeah. And it's the same with like spoken word or poetry nights or whatever. And it's that sort of like classic joke, you know, sort of like, oh, I, I wrote this on, in the Uber here or, you know, or, <laughs> yeah. I wrote this this morning. I'm just going to perform it. Um, you don't you, you don't get to do that yeah, in publishing. So, yeah, it's weird. Pros and cons to both. <laughs> oh, God, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, I absolutely. Know. I get what you're saying. That makes a lot of sense. Well, it is 10 to. Time absolutely races by. Um I've loved both is of the it points. Really? It is, yeah, I know. It's mad, isn't it? Um, so, if there's anything in particular that you want to share, then that would now's your time. But also, if you just want to stay chatting, it's entirely up to you. Well, maybe shall I do? Shall I do another one from the book and then like another new one? That would be awesome. That would be perfect. Yeah, thank you. Let's do one from the book then. Um... Um, you know, has helped um, me in lockdown. Um, this is called uh, Miracle, and it's after a poem by Jameson Fitzpatrick uh, called I Woke Up. And I uh, wrote it um, as part of a, a workshop with Ben Norris. So shout out Ben Norris. Um, thanks for giving me the inspiration. Here we go, miracle. I woke up and it was a miracle. I had nowhere to be, but I got out of bed. And that in itself 
was a miracle. The tea I made was a miracle. And how I left you sleeping because you looked so peaceful. And the clothes on the floor and the wine still in the bottle, that was definitely a miracle. The cat purring was a miracle. The noise from the builders next door. Butter melting on white toast, the toast on my tongue was a miracle. I dressed in front of the mirror and it was a miracle. I took time to look at myself, ran my fingers over my body, my face, my hair and thought it was beautiful. I smiled and it was a miracle to see myself smile back. Class, absolute class. Such a, such a brilliant poem. Got to, got to take the little miracles at the moment, Matt, as we know. You know, even getting out of bed or having a walk around the park, yeah. that's a bloody miracle. It is. Pat yourself is. on the back for it. Yeah, that's your lockdown masterpiece. So, Staying going. <laughs> that's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just like, you can't, there's just so much pressure all the time. And I think if, if, if people are going to put pressure on themselves in the middle of this absolutely mental shitstorm, like how... Like, when is anyone ever going to have time to gather themselves? You know? Yeah, yeah. There's no breathing space anymore, all... is there? No, nah, we're all guilty of it. And, it, you know, you just want to be the best version of yourself. But sometimes the best version of yourself is sitting in your pants eating fish fingers. And I maintain that. I wholeheartedly concur. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do that after this? Yes. I'll put the other one. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, let's have another new one then. That would be a wonderful way to round up. I think they could at random. Let's have another. I think they're all brill. Let's have another new one. I want to do like a playful one. Um. All right, I'll do this one. So, this is set at Christmas um, and it's like I'm still working on it so it's not finished yet but um, it's called Serrated I'm a brat raising my voice after glass three it's times like this I wish I still smoked honestly who do I think I am swanning about in my garish jumper might as well have whacked granddad round the bonce with a sodding brick. I've started the second layer of chockies before the top one's done. Dear God, I've gifted you the wrong bread knife. The East Enders drums kick in. Just look at me. Spilling gravy all over the bloody carpet. Jesus wept. See what I've done. Mum's burning cinnamon candles. Adjusting the crib and crossing herself. I'm a heathen, bleating sheep. You shake your head, the queen rattles on. I crack an inappropriate joke. Look around for some kind of offering. Bread and butter pudding as good as Nan's. A mortgage, the right kind of knife. Perfect. I'm really glad you shared that. That was this. Um, it's, it's weird, isn't it? It's, uh... What's that? Don't know. It's great. It's just a fantastic Oh, I, I will say, I, swear, I will say as well, like, I could not have written anything, like, absolutely anything in lockdown without Cecilia Knapp. Cecilia Knapp was running, like, weekly workshops, and it was, like, the only, like, solid, apart from my front room Zumba, it was, like, the only solid in my diary every week um thing that i had and it was just like loads of um you know like poetry prompts and like zero pressure just fun and i've had so much come out of it um and yeah she's the young uh, laureate for london at the moment and she is just incredible um and regularly does like workshops and stuff like that so if you're a poet follow cecilia now yeah i know people watching went to him as well and bah, 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 bah. Yeah. so good 
she's top class, isn't so she? To be fair. Her out. And um, yeah, I feel like a lot the poetry community is one of the few art forms that's really managed to stay above water during lockdown, thanks to like workshops and gigs like that. And Cecilia is definitely one of the people who've been driving that. So yeah, shout out to Cecilia and to Bernie Nye as well. To be fair, the publisher of All Right Girl, they've been doing a lot of events and podcasts and stuff, haven't they? Yeah, did a wicked um, gig with Bernie and I uh, last week. Um, and then there's just, I, I just have so much respect for people that have just embraced this. And you, Matt, you're doing this every week. Do you know what I mean? I'm usually whipping up the dinner. You're in here with your guest. Um, it, you know, it's, it's, it's so admirable. And I just, you know, I don't have it in me, to be honest with you. So I just have so much respect for people that embrace that and like carry it forward. Well, it's for me, like I, I just, it, it's such a joy. It's such a privilege to have spend half an hour in a poet's company every week. It's one of the things that's kept me going. Um, but also obviously it's important to me to give people a platform and stuff, but from a selfish perspective, <laughs> I've really enjoyed it as well. Um, I've been the Alan Carr of the poetry world. Um, so Living Record Festival, that's live until what, 22nd of Feb? Is that right? Yeah, 22nd of Feb. And um, you can buy it. So you buy a ticket and then you can listen to it anytime. And once you start listening to it, it's there for like 24 hours. So you can pause it, like go back, listen to stuff again, or you can listen to it multiple times or oh and there's like a gifting thing so if you buy it a ticket you can gift it to up to 10 other people for 25 percent off that price and then they can do that again for 25 percent off so it keeps getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper so if you like went in with a load of mates you know the idea is that you can all sort of share it and that's cool it gets like more and more affordable yeah and there's a discount code for your book as well, isn't there? so you get 25% off your book. Discount well. code for my book. So, yeah, you can buy All Right, Girl. Um, I tried to do, like, that whole screen, but you're there, so Sorry. I couldn't. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I'm moving back. Out. Sorry. Why are you there? Okay. <laughs> uh, live in record, all one word in capital letters, if you buy it from my shop. My Big Cartel, which is on my website, www.mariaferg.com. Perfect. Then you can get 25% off. Cool. Well, um, thank you so much for sharing your time tonight and for sharing your poems, uh, new and old. Uh, somebody there, Jack, says, so glad I stumbled on this tonight. Wonderful poems. You're a miracle. I think that sums it up very nicely. Oh, um, that is so sweet. Yeah. Who's that then? I, I should thought, have been reading these while I was going through, do you know what I mean? There have been some lovely ones like Ella, Dom and Gajia and Rick Dove and Chip and Adam's been watching and obviously Boralu has oh, been uh, sending my love hearts. Yeah, so yeah, it's been, um, it's been oh, great. Oh, this e is so Ella, cute. Ella's part of Living Record as well, isn't she? Ella's um, got a show on there. Yeah, got, some poems on got there. two yeah. star, two, two, a bloody shambles and on record, I believe. Yeah. I hope I got that right. Yeah. Um, oh, it was Jack... Finch Harding, who I went to drama school with, is 15. Oh. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> nice. babes. Nice. It's a good thing cool. I didn't read my East 15 ones, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> By the book. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> oh, top stuff. Well, thank you, Maria Ferguson. Um, you've been wonderful. And I usually say, hopefully, I'll see you again in person at some point, but I'll see you in about two minutes. Yeah, should we have? Uh, I I say should we have some fish fingers? But I've already cooked a goulash. Let's have some goulash. Do it tomorrow. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. See you in a mo. Thank you. Uh, uh, that was the wonderful Maria Ferguson this week's session. So yeah, check that out at Living Record. Go to mariaferg dot com. Uh, listen to the book. Buy the book. Follow Maria. Um, I'll be back next week, same time, half past seven, Tuesday night. Uh, my name is Matt Abbott. We are some folks. Thank you all for tuning in and for your beautiful comments, and I'll, I'll see you all soon. Stay alert. <laughs>